guys you're welcome back today is all about electricity and there are two methods we are going to go about this today so I titled them case one and case two now take a look at them so this is case one if you look at the circuit diagram properly you're going to see that um, PQ is the meter bridge and then the resistance bus is at the right arm or the right gap of the meter bridge while the standard resistor which is a one ohm resistor is at the left arm or the left gap of the meter bridge then there is also a standard resistor which is unknown which serves as a protective resistor connected in series with the galvanometer and of course the jockey pointing at point b while the cell and the key are all connected in series from one end of the meter bridge to the other so this is the first case or the first connection we are going to do and then going forward i'll also show you another case or another connection that would come up briefly so if you take a look at this second case you would see that the resistance bus is connected in parallel with the unknown resistor at the right gap of the meter bridge while the known resistor the one ohm resistor is connected at the left gap of the meter bridge so this is also another way we could connect this but the first one is very much preferable and i'm going to show you how you would be able to connect that and then also how you could be able to get accurate result while taking your reading so we'll go straight to the practicals and of course you know that at the end i'm going to tabulate the reading and i'm going to show you how my table looks like and then plot the graph and show you how the graph also looks like and of course don't forget that we'll take adequate precautions in conducting this experiment so i'm going to be also stating out some precautions that you can take in order to obtain accurate results and of course some other theory or some sub questions that could come out um, when you face this kind of experiment in an examination so let's go straight to the practical okay so these are the components that we'll be using for this experiment first here is a one ohm resistor which i'm going to be connecting to this left arm of the um, of the meter bridge so if you look at the meter bridge this is the left arm you can see that we have the zero mark from this end and then we have the center and of course we have the the right arm which, or the right gap at this point so i told you earlier from the drawing that i'm going to be connecting this at the left part of the meter of the meter bridge the galvanometer also is there with zero center galvanometer which we are going to use of course ensure that um, you avoid zero error in reading the galvanometer so ensure that your pointer is exactly at zero before you, you even start um, your experiment now here is the standard resistor is a two ohm resistor now for for this experiment is going to be the unknown i'm going to tape it and label it the x which you saw in the drawing and then this is the jockey that we'll use in tapping or making contact with the resistor wire that is on top of the meter room and then here is a 100 ohm resistance bus 100 ohm resistance bus from 1 to 100 at this point and then we have the key or the switch at this end and of course our battery this is 2 1.5 um, volt battery for the standard if you would have two volt battery that would be acceptable and then this can be connected the way it you saw in the circuit so i'm going to go forward now and connect it and then we'll start taking our readings so that we could plot the graph quickly so here is the connection the one ohm resistor connected to the left gap here is the the protective um, resistor connected in series with um, the galvanometer or the zero center galvanometer which is in turn connected to the jockey for tapping of the, the resistance wire and then at the right arm or the right gap I have the resistance bus fully connected there and then from this other end 
I have the key and then connected to the cell, connected to the left part. So all I'm just going to do is to uh, measure the resistance or find the balance length with a, over a given resistance. So based on the question given, I'm going to um, find the balance length on the meter bridge that is as a result of the resistance of the wire. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll tabulate my readings based on this uh, demonstration and I'll use it and plot a graph and then I'll show you the theory behind everything that I have done. So I'm all set now to conduct this experiment. The first thing I'm going to do is to find the balance length when R is zero. First of all, I'm going to note that down. That is when there, um, the resistance is zero. So once I've gotten that uh, the balance length, I can now continue according to the equation. I'm going to be using R to be equal to 30, 20, 10, 5, 3, and 1. But before that, I need to get the R, uh, the balance length when R is equal to zero. For this particular experiment, the major challenge that you're going to be encountering is likely to come from the resistance bus. Yes. So I have developed um, a technical way of making the resistance bus work optimally for me. Because if you notice, Anytime you are doing any experiment with a resistance bus, you need to either press it down for it to give you the maximum value because if you leave it like this and when you press it over a, a certain uh, condition, it's going to give you two values. So instead of pressing it down all the time when you are doing the experiment in order to get the accurate result, I have developed a technical way of um, doing that and that is this. So I just put a, a load, a small set of masses on top of it that will help me take care of that while I concentrate in doing my experiment instead of exerting my energy in vain. So I just put a load on, on it in such a way that I'll be sure that the, um, the key is making full contact in order to ensure maximum flow of current. That is actually the reason why most times when you do this experiment, you don't get the desired result that you want because um, one of the major um, precautions of electricity is that there must be tight connection. And because most times the, the key is not making full connection or full contact with the, um, the resistance bus, then current will not flow optimally and that will also affect the result. So this is one of the ways I myself, I handled that issue in such a way that my result will be accurate. So let me find out what my um, balance length will be at R equal to zero. So before you do that, confirm that your galvanometer is working optimally by tapping the jockey at the right hand side, which will bring about a deflection to the left hand side, and tapping it at the left hand side, which will bring about a deflection to the right hand side. So in that way, once you confirm that your jockey is is working, uh, sorry, your galvanometer is working optimally. Please take note, don't scrape the jockey along the resistance uh, wire. Don't. Just tap it gently. Just tap it gently. So I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get my balance length for R equal to, um, R equal to zero. So here is 0 0.50, 0 0.50 here, and I'm having zero point. 0.1 so I have here 50.5 50.5 is giving me exactly 0 50.5 or rather 51 here my balance length is at 0 0.51 so 51 is giving me 0 so that is R equal to 0 my balance length is 51 so I'm going to proceed now to the other um, ones I have R30, so I'm going to pull 10 and 20 to get R30. So I'm going to find the balance length at R equal to 30. And I'll do the same for 20, same for 10, same for 5, 3, and 1. And then we'll continue. So here is the reading for number 20. Number 20, if you look at this, this I'm putting it at point 0.10, point 0.9, point 0.8, here, 0 0.7, 0 
it's, it's still coming close 0 0.6 0 0.5 okay 0 0.4 you can see it's, it's almost close there 0 0.3 0 0.3 so 0 0.3 is almost close there so let me put it at 2.5 so you can see that at 2.5 i have my um this in balance so i'm going to record 2.5 cm for r equal to 20. for r equal to 10 here is what i have i'm at point 10 i'm at point 9 i'm at point 8 it's almost close there i'm at point 7 you can see that point 0.7 has given me zero center so here is it here 7.7 so .7 and it's balanced at zero so I'm going to record for 10 7 so we are in point 0.5 now you can see um, let me start from around 16 16 is almost close I know what to expect so I'm going straight to what I'm looking out for 14 it's not exactly there let me check 13 13 has passed a bit okay 12 is far so let me put it at 13 it's just it's just one 13.5 13.5 let me sorry 14 rather 14 gave me zero so here is 14 and here is 14 14 is zero for r is equal to three I'm trying to balance it this is 24 this is 23, this is 20, this is 19, 19 is almost close, so I will use 18.5, um, 18.5, you can see 18.5 is, is at point 0, so my balance length is 18.5 when R is equal to 3. So finally, when R is equal to 1, I stopped at 18, let me just continue from there, 20, 22 24 it's coming close 26 it's almost there 28 it's just there let me try 29 29 is not exactly there let me try 30 30 is as if it has crossed a bit so let me do it at 29.5 yes 29.5 exactly gave me the balance length so i'll record that for i record to one so this represents what the table looks like. If you notice from this table that YR is reducing, that L is increasing. So I'm, I'll be required to plot a graph of R's inverse, that's the reciprocal of R against the reciprocal of L. So I'm going to do the graph briefly now and show you how the graph turned out to be. And then I will show you um, some few questions and some precautions that you would have to take while um, answering this question.